All right, so we've got this table. We've got some data in it. Now let's put it into our site. So let's hop back over to Aptana, and we're going to run our first query. So we go back to our index page, and we need to find out the data for the page. So for this example, we're going to go ahead and just put this up here at the top. So let's give ourselves some lines after that uh, include for the setup. And we'll go ahead and bump that down. Now we need to run a query. And if you need to know more about this, again, we've got videos that uh, explain this more in depth. The way I like to do the queries is we're going to store the query into a variable. Many times you'll see people using the variable name query for this. I like to shorten it and use Q. So we need dollar sign Q and then equals. And in this case, we're going to use double quotes. And we'll get into why later. So in these double quotes, we need to write our query. Query languages are actually really, um, they're not necessarily simple, but they make a lot more sense to the naked eye than uh, many other languages out there. They're pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and write this and then we'll explain it. So what we want to do is run a select query. So we do select and the, uh, the commands we do in this query we want to do in all caps. So select and we want, uh, we want all. We want all the, uh, the fields or columns from the table from the record we're looking for. So we're going to use what's called the wildcard key and that is the asterisk. That means all. If we wanted to we could just be specific and select one piece of data or a couple pieces. We could do um, the title and the ID. So then we're just selecting the title and the ID. We don't have the access to the body or the heading but we want all of that this time so we're going to do all and we need to say where where are we selecting this from because right now we only have one table in in this uh, database but um, further down the road we're going to have more tables so we need to be specific so we need to say from pages now pages isn't a command we're telling it this is the pages table so that doesn't need to be all caps in fact it needs to match what we how we created it in the database. So select all from pages. Right now this would select all of the records, but we just want one. We want the home page. So we're going to give it a condition. We're going to say where ID equals one. So now we're just selecting the first record or the record with the ID of one, which is going to be our home page. So we've got our query. Now this hasn't run yet. We've just stored this string into a variable. So PHP doesn't know what to do with this yet. So we need to run the MySQL query function. And what we're going to do is we're going to store that function or the result of that function into a variable as well. A lot of times you'll see people using the uh, making a variable called result. I'm going to shorten it down to R. So dollar sign $r for result equals MySQL i underscore query. And uh, it needs two parameters. We need the link to the database or the connection to the database and then the query. So instead of dollar sign link, we want to do dbc. So dbc. And then instead of query, we want to do q. And then we want to close that statement with a semicolon, and there you have it. So, as long as we've written this correctly, we're going to run this MySQL query. We're going to give it the query and the database connection that we created up here in the setup file. And it's going to store the result, all the data that we just asked for, into this R variable. But this R variable is going to be a MySQL object, and we want to, we're going to convert it into what's called an array. 
An array is kind of like a, a variable, only it's, a, it's kind of like a variable that can hold more than one piece of information. And we have some pretty good videos, a whole, whole set of videos on arrays, PHP arrays, that you can check out if you need more information on that. We need to give this array a name. And we do that the same way we define a variable. So we're going to call this array page. And then page equals, and then we need to run a function. And this function is going to take that MySQL data object and convert it into an array for us and that array is going to be called page. So that function is mysqli underscore fetch a soch. And a soch stands for associative or associative array. And I'll explain that in a second. We need to give this a parameter and the parameter is going to be the result, so the r variable. So this function here is going to run, it's going to take the result object, or the MySQL data object, and convert it into an associative array. And that array is called page. So in order to access things, like we saw here in the uh, title here, where we do echo page title, if we did echo page, we would get an error, or it would just spit out the word array, telling us this is an array. Page itself doesn't have any data. We're, we need to be more specific because this is an array. It holds more than one piece of information. We need to give it a key. So this page array needs a key and to do a key we do these square brackets or square braces and we're going to give it a string to tell it what we need to find. So we need single quotes and the key is going to match the column name in the database. So if we wanted to know, so if we wanted to echo out the page title, we need to put the word title in here. And this is where the word associative comes in. By creating an associative array, that means it's going to use words for the keys. The other type of array is a numeric array or indexed array where it's going to use numbers. I like to use associative arrays because it makes it easier for us to grab the data because we can go and look at our database and know what the keys are by just looking at our column names. If this was a numeric array, it might be page zero, or for page title might be key number two, but I'm not positive without hopping back over here and counting, you know, zero, one, two. Okay, so it's not two, it's going to be one, you know, so that's a little more confusing. So by using an associative array, we can simply just use the name of the column. Now, we don't want to echo that right here. So what's cool here is that we've run this query, we've got the result, and it's stored in this page array, so now we can use this information anywhere on this page that we want. So for instance, right here, this H1, this could be our page heading. So let's remove content area. and Let's put in a PHP tag and we'll say echo page and then we need our brackets And then inside single quotes, header, then we need to close that statement and then close our PHP tag. So this is going to go in, and for this first record, because it's ID 1, that's the one we asked for, it's going to grab the header, and it's going to spit it out on the page here, inside this H1 tag. So let's go ahead and save this and take a look. We never fixed our password from the last video. So let's go over here to setup and make sure our password's correct. Save that. Refresh. There you go. Here's our page title or our page header. Pretty cool. So let's pop back over here to our index page really quick. 
and we don't just want the header we also want to put the body of our page in there so let's go ahead and put that inside of a paragraph tag so again we do PHP echo page and in our brackets we want the body so we just need to make sure that that matches the column name in the database or in that table and close the PHP save that up over here and if I refresh I should see a bunch of lorem ipsum there you go now we also added the page title for the uh, the browser the tab so we can actually get rid of this page title here and we can change that to page and then put in our brackets here and title so we can save that and I'm pretty sure we made it exactly the same so this shouldn't change up here yeah so that saves as a home page so that's pretty cool uh, before we move on what we can do is we can take this here because we don't need to have this we don't need our queries scattered throughout here so let's go ahead and take this cut that out and we can trim this back up to one line if you want to save that go over to setup Let's go ahead down here and let's paste that query. So now, because this is in the setup file, and the setup file is being included at the very first line of the page, we can use that page array throughout the entire page. So back over to setup, let's go ahead and do some commenting here. You can call this like page setup, or uh, I like to do. So this area here is going to contain all the information for our page. So we can go ahead and get rid of this because we're not using that anymore, and save that. And just to uh, show that it works, go over here and refresh, and everything still comes as we need it. There you go. Now. This is pretty cool, but uh, not really what we're going for. Because we don't want this hard coded in. We want the pages to be loaded dynamically. We want to be able to load different content from the database and not have to hard code it in here. So we'll be doing that next.